we are. Happy Monday, greetings and salutations. Hello all, if you think this is a political news show, you have come to the wrong place. Welcome to the Monday Mock with myself, Ben, and my wonderful co-host, who is still very ill down there, Natalie. Um, Hello, and- everyone. Hello! And we are here, of course, to laugh at things we have seen on social media. We will discuss them, obviously, as well. Um, and, and the first item has c- c- kind of been dropped upon us tonight by producer producer John. And he gives us this. And I, I do find it quite amusing. It's happened, ladies and gentlemen, a Chinese person with a random English word it. as a tattoo. It's an old meme. It is an old meme. But still, what, what word is it? I can't quite see it from here. What it, word have they got? What English word? It is value. 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 And I imagine most, you know, the people that have got the sort of Chinese writing tattooed upon them, it probably says things like that. Probably says things like value, Coca Cola, Pepsi, or Monster Energy. Um, <laughs> how, uh, ben, how many uh, tattooists do you reckon have a good laugh with the uh, Chinese? Uh, writing and they say or oh, put something like love or peace and they actually put some dodgy swear word or something that means something completely different and nobody's going to have any idea well indeed i mean producer john was just in my ear saying it probably says soup it probably says soup on a uh, on a random British person. Obviously, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you're going to get annoyed with me for saying that by the end of the show. But this is our show and we will continue. Uh, so I'm going to go to, first of all, uh, Natalie, you're going to have to uh, uh, set us up with this. This is a tweet from Chris Barnes. And you saw this earlier. and. I did. Uh, It it spoke to you, didn't it? It did. Uh, So it says, I think we just need to accept the 90s was our peak as species. So uh, I thought we could discuss it, see what we think, because I agree. I've actually said this a lot uh, recently to people. What do you think, Ben? 90s? Was it our peak? Well, I am a child of the late 80s, showing my age there. Oof. But I'm a child of the late 80s and actually grew up a young child and sort of through the 90s. And so I look back on that time extremely fondly. I mean, you are slightly older than me. Spoiler alert. Um you are slightly older than me, so you were probably doing things like partying more often through the late 90s than I was. But... I just remember, like, when we think of things like tolerance, for example, you know, we have that all shoved down our throat right now. The idea of tolerance through the 90s when I was a child was just the Martin Luther King idea of tolerance. Judge someone by the content of the character, not by the color of their skin. And now we're being told that was wrong. That was the wrong yeah. mindset. And we should judge people by the color of their skin. I I don't believe that to be true. I still believe that the idea of tolerance that we were taught through the 90s was probably the correct one. But I do seem to remember health and safety laws were much more lax. You could, get away, you could get away with making the crystal maze and have somebody falling off something. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm, I'm there. I'm with you. I've, I've written the uh, same word in my notes. I put tolerance. I think people were just generally more understanding. I don't, well, in the 90s, I don't remember people being racist or homophobic. People were kind of taught you accept people as they are. If they're yeah. a prat, treat them as a prat. If exactly. they're a nice person, treat them as a nice person. Uh, it doesn't matter what gender they are or what uh, what race they are or any other uh, class kind of issues. You know, it was treat people as they treat you. And, and that is uh, not happening now. We are very divided, uh, polarized viewpoints everywhere. And uh, yeah, the 90s, it was just more chilled. And uh, I was Let thinking me about stop you for a minute, yeah. because. I'm going to I'm going to hit you with a negative to do with the 90s cuz let's face it the music was shit. It really was shit. Oh no. <laughs> I, I, ben, I absolutely disagree. It's not often we disagree, but I've written down. You see, the eighties was um, a good time, but the music and the, and the hair and the do, the dodgy eighties yes. music. The nineties, yes. the nineties yes. was all about the great music. Uh, yeah, and like you said, I grew up properly in the nineties, partying. So, and also I, I wrote down as well uh, some of the uh, the the kind of the 
clothes that I remember. Naff Naff, Stussy, Fruit of the Loom, United Colours of Benetton. Everybody remember those? They were classic 90s gear, they were. Kappa. Kappa, Kappa. Kappa. And then you had the, the, the track suits with the zippers that, the, the, yep. that, that everybody had to open. They were brilliant. That with um, a, like United Colours of Benetton jumper and stuff and a Stussy coat, you, you know, uh, Reebok Classics. That, that you know, you'd be super cool. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm getting a bit of I'm getting a b- bit of pushback in the in the in the chat here tonight, saying this completely disagreeing with me about the music, and that's fair enough, right? But I'm someone who probably likes the music from the 80s and 70s better than I like the music from like the 90s and especially the early 2000s. The early 2000s music has just been pff, terrible, absolutely. Yeah. God. Yeah, it really is bad. It's all um, done on a computer with auto tune. Barely anybody actually making music anymore or actually singing with any talent. Just yeah. reading in the chat, um, I think John said 70s is the best. Uh, 1920s, we've got as well. Um, 90s to 2001. 80s were wonderful. So, yeah, people disagree in here. But for me, 90s was the peak, and I'm going to stick with it, Ben. Okay, well, that's fair enough. You know, this is what it's all about here. We can, of course, agree to disagree. But where we can't agree to disagree is, uh, well, uh, well, okay, let me set this up for you before we move on. Just Stop Oil is a group that is led by two people. The first one is Roger Hallam, and the second one is a young lady named, and, and this is her real name, Indigo Rumbelo. <laughs> are you sure are you yep. sure that's her real name did she change it by deep no, that is her real name and i'm gonna read this tweet that came out from indigo run below uh, because i actually interacted with her and i managed to get the most ridiculous response and we'll go for it so indigo says my friend cal good is currently imprisoned on remand at hmp bedford for resisting the home office's inhumane plan to take people to the bibby stock home email messages of solidarity and bloody bloody blah so i responded because i'm an inquisitive man and i like to stir the old pot a bit <laughs> i said that's not why he is on remand though is it um so indigo did respond to me and it's there on the screen now she said yes it is they are on remand for obstruction of the highway for resisting the coach leaving that day they have other outstanding court cases for taking action with just stop oil but was not in breach of bail to which i responded simply I would suggest that committing a further crime whilst on bail would be a breach of bail. I think that goes to our saying, doesn't it? <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't that the first um, rule, of, rule of thumb? I'm sure John would be able to tell us as a policeman. No, I, if, you, I, if, if you're on bail and you commit another crime, you're getting arrested immediately. Does she not yeah. understand that? Well, do, do, do you know what? She seems to think that committing another crime isn't isn't breach of a current bail. This woman is leading a cult of people to go and commit crimes. Yeah. And she's she's telling them these things and they're believing her and they're going to end up with their... Okay, I kind of feel sorry for them in a sense because they are going to end up with their lives completely messed up by the end of all of this. But... They are still making the active choices to go out and take these actions. We have to remember that. But it's another example, Ben, of confirmation bias and lies mm. and gaslighting people. We're seeing it so often, whether it be the government or other companies. In this case, Just Stop Oil. It's, it's lies, but she's telling it to, yeah. to herself, to other people, and hoping people are going to believe it. Well, in fact, if course. he's on bail and he's committed another crime, and John just said that he thinks that's correct as well, of course you're yeah. going to get in trouble. And of, and of course, right, she never came back to me. Because of course, of course, she didn't at that point. Because such a simplistic answer as "you are wrong" if you are telling people that they're not breaching bail whilst committing another crime probably made her go, "Oh shit!" <laughs> that kind yeah. of. Pro- I take it. I take it she didn't reply to that one, did she, Ben? No, of course not. No, of course, of course not. not. 
and of course Roger Hallam as well who started he, he's one of the leaders of Just Stop Oil but he also is one of the founders of Extinction Rebellion and um, uh, I would I would argue the man needs to spend the rest of his life in a secure unit for some of the things that he has said uh, in the past and that's no slight against people that may be in a secure unit I just think that's probably <laughs> the best place for him yeah absolutely Britt mate says is she one of those women who wears 500 quid backpacks and destroys oh, yeah. expensive paintings yeah I oh, think yeah. she'll go into that category Britt mate yeah oh yeah indigo, indigo rumbolo is definitely living off mummy and daddy's money yeah. For sure. Indigo Rumble. And Indigo Rumbolo is still definitely getting on them planes and sounds having like, foreign holidays. It, it's probably it sounds like a car- Range Rovers. Like from the Gruffalo. I just obviously did the Gruffalo <laughs> ride. It's like so, it just seems so ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, Gruffalo. That no. there is Indigo. Indigo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, Gruffalo. Uh, Gruffalo. See? Oh, dear. Oh dear. Okay, right. We're going to move on then. We're going to move to our TikTok first... went viral after demanding wheelchairs for fat people. Does it matter if you think a wheelchair user is only using a wheelchair because they are disabled by their fatness? She is known for her confidence online, making people love their bodies, no matter how big or small they are. She would wear bikinis and show to the public how good she looks in them. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm not apologizing to you for being fat. I'm so sorry, babe. I'm not. I mean. Like, obesity, is it your obesity? She tried on pieces of clothing. What do you think, Ben? She's, uh, I I thought the big debate point here would be, do we agree with her? Do, do you... Fat people or being overweight, does that automatically make you disabled, as she was trying to claim? Well, um... First of all, I, I do want to preface this with the fact that I'm neither a doctor or a scientist. However... Uh, I am a man who has been 23 stone nine in the past. Wow, um, I didn't know that. Yes, and uh, I'll sh- I'll show you a picture at some point. It's next week's show. It's next bad. Show. I'm expecting it. But um, all I can say is when I was that size, I was on the cusp of diabetes. I was on the cusp of diabetes. My blood tests were all coming back. If you don't do something about this, you are going to end up with diabetes. So whilst I'm saying maybe not automatically, I'm saying there are so many things that can come along with being that size. Heart problems, diabetes, vascular problems. You can end up with so many issues. Now, first and foremost, you guys know me and you know I'll never tell people what to do. People want to do that to themselves. They've absolutely every right to do it. Um, however, uh, I I, I want to just harp on this wheelchair thing. If you've got these other issues, then, then sure, you're probably going to need a wheelchair at some point. But if you're just saying, I need a wheelchair because I can't be asked to walk, um, I, I try my best day in, day out to extend the, the, the amount of time I've got on my legs. Right, I have to use a mobility scooter slash wheelchair if I'm doing long distances or going around a theme park, as you'll know, Natalie, yeah. and as anybody will know who watches The Real Review. I'm trying my best with physical therapies to try and get myself out of my chair and onto my stick for longer than possible or for as long as possible. Um, These sorts of people don't understand the mindset what it's like to be in a chair now i don't know what it's like to be in a full time wheelchair and i i want to i want that to last as long as possible so for people to just want it for the sake of it I, it it affects me yeah i think when i saw this video it's the sense of entitlement to me and the kind of hypocrisy uh, with it, because on one hand, uh, this person, and I don't like to kind of make judgment or ridicule people online, but this person has chosen to do it. They are making videos. This isn't someone that's been photographed in the street. They're putting themselves out there to be judged. And yeah. you know, there's a big difference when she's on one hand saying, big is beautiful. This is the way you should be. I'm not embarrassed by my size. But then saying, but I demand to be classified as disabled and I want to take that as well as a victim mentality. There's some kind of contradiction there for me. That's not to say that some overweight people are are disabled and that for many uh, reasons that could be. But this one, it doesn't sit comfortably with me. It's almost like, you know, I want to take the good and the bad at the same time. I want to take all the good from body positivity, but also then say I'm disabled and get all the perks from that as well. It doesn't sit right with me, Ben. I, I mean, uh, and once again, just harping back to what I said at the beginning of this segment, someone who, as someone who's been 23 stone at nine, 
I think the body positivity movement uh, can be dangerous, and that's all I'm going to say. It can, say. yeah, it absolutely can be. And and the, it, it, there's nothing wrong with being happy in your own body um, no. and and uh, feeling confident, but there has to be, to me, uh, the truth coming with it. To try and claim that someone of that size doesn't have problems uh, with their health. I mean, I'm tiny and I've got problems at the moment with gastro reflux problems. And it, that increases the bigger you get, diabetes, yeah. all of these type of things. And, and to try and pretend that doesn't happen is, is does everybody an injustice on this whole uh, and I think, positive movement. And I think that's where we will leave this because yeah. our next photograph for you tonight has once again been provided by Natalie. And uh, there's a series of them we're going to go through. Uh, not right this second. Keep this one up now. But Natalie, I need you to set the scene here. Yeah, because this is uh, following up from last week. And this is uh, for Ben's wife, Chrissy, because she said to me uh, this week, I want to see a picture of the cat woman because Chrissy says she's a bit of a cat woman herself. But Chrissy, yeah. you do not look like this lady, Jocelyn uh, Wilderston. Uh, she's a Swiss socialite. I thought she was dead, but she's not. Uh, mm -hmm. She's very, very famous for looking like uh, a, a cat. Uh, 83 years old now she is and still going Ooh. strong despite all the plastic surgery. Ben. Now, uh, you, you, you said to me earlier, or you asked me earlier, d d should we have a conversation on whether or not people should be allowed to go this far with themselves? And I think they should. Right. I think they, as long as, like I said in the in, in the last segment, as long as they're not harming anybody else and they're mentally competent, I, I think that they should be able to do these things to themselves because I'm a firm believer of your body, your choice. I, th I think for me, the only thing um, as uh, a doctor, a plastic surgeon, because I've been watching some videos on it and what they say, all mm. doctors take an oath um, to uh, do no harm. So. There is some surgeries where they, a surgeon has to turn around and says, I can't do that because it will kill yeah. you. And, 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 and within that, I think surgeons have a right to say, you know, that at that point it isn't right. But up to then, even if we don't agree with it, even if we don't like the way they look, if it's not actually affecting their health uh, when they have the operation and they continue, it's up to that person and their freedom of choice to look. She wants to look like a cat woman. She's made it to well, 83. I'm not sure I'm going to make it to picture. 83. Move on. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you decide whether or not she has succeeded in her mission of looking like a cat. I mean, this is how she intended to end up looking. Um, I, I've, I, I honestly think um, she hasn't succeeded very well in her mission. But no. she intended to look like this. Now, the next picture is a, a tale of plastic surgery gone wrong. Someone who continued to have surgeries until they absolutely messed up their face. And that's the actor Mickey Rourke. And I think... The, wow, look at those pictures. I think the surgeries to Mickey Rourke may not... may They, they may be an exception to this rule because he was having them done because he was in a poor state of mental health. And... Yes. I think at that point, someone needs to step in and evaluate and say, are you in the right frame of mind to be making these decisions? That, exactly. That, that to me is for the job it, it, you know, um, of the plastic surgeon or doctor. That's the same for any procedure, um, you know, or or, you know, as we've said about other other operations that people may want, you've got to make sure that person has informed consent. And if you have a mental health condition, you can't give full informed consent. So to I me, that, so, so that, that's really, really important. And it, these pictures are quite sad when you look at it. And, and you see nowadays so many of these people, the women now with these big lips. And the and 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 the, the faces that don't move and and you know this is kind of where it started with Mickey Rourke. Yeah, I will say the man, despite the way he ended up looking, um, he is still an extremely talented actor. He's still an yeah. extremely talented actor, and in fact, as a bit of a bit of sweet, I guess, silver lining, I think the fucked up look has actually ended up giving him some more notable film roles over the years I, that he yeah. may have got. Um, you know. He he was even Vanko in in Iron Man two, and um, uh, I I don't know if he would have got that role if he looked like the gorgeous Mickey Rourke on on the left there. Yeah, it, I, I'm, it, I'm just saying it changed it changed completely for him. But um, I wonder how people think um, 
like how he thinks he looks now. I know the cat lady uh, did all these interviews and said she's very happy still with the amount of plastic surgery and doesn't regret it at all. But you do wonder uh, if they doff protest too much. I tell you who else is very happy. Someone I promised you I would show you last week. This is German transracial woman Martina Big, who got injections and surgeries to turn herself black. I told wow. you she was real. She is. I she's, there she is. I honestly, if you hadn't have told me this was real, I would have thought this is like a Bo Selector type character caricature no, on a TV program. It's, it's real. It's real. Does, she, it, does this not count as blackface, though? I don't know. Right? Now, but the, but the thing is, this is such a difficult conversation to have on this platform, so we have to be extremely careful with our words, okay? But if people will accept other trans, then surely they should accept this trans. That's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to elaborate. But so, To be honest, I don't care how anyone wants care. to look. Right. If she if she wants to look like that, good on her. As long as it doesn't affect my everyday life, and then she's mm -hmm. not trying to tell me how I should act and how I should dress, and that affects my freedoms. Good on you. If that's how you want to look, you know, if you want to look like both selector character, you go for it, girl. Brit mate in the chat says she looks a bit more authentic than Rachel Dolezal. And if you don't know who Rachel Dolezal is. <laughs> She will feature next week on Wait, Monday yes. Mock. Yes. <laughs> I think Rachel uh, Dollar. What's her, what's her second name? Is it Dollar Soul? Did you say? Um, yeah, I Rachel. think she was. I I think she looks quite authentic. She still. She's. Uh, do you not think? Is she still pretending to be black? Yeah. She, yeah. She is. Yeah. <laughs> she still. So we'll, we'll bring that one up next time, and we can see what people think on that one. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 we just had the voice in the air say yeah. wait a minute michael jackson pretended to be white <laughs> <laughs> um and uh slim says my partner identified as trans slender so there we go why not why exactly not? <laughs> identify as whoever you want exactly if it makes you feel good just remember your rights uh end where somebody else's begins That's very very true that's 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 the long and short of it. So if you yeah. want to go around, you know, calling yourself a rainbow unicorn, you feel free to do that. I am not yeah. going to stop you. I will never stop you. Just don't try and force yeah. me by consequence to acknowledge that. That's all. Yep, absolutely. I might yeah. pretend I'm a microwave tomorrow, but you don't have to pretend that I am. <laughs> or I might pretend I'm something else. But if that's my, that's you know all what? my freedom of choice. That's that's quite. I hate food cooked in the microwave so much, right? That my microwave is used as a kitchen timer and nothing else. I put I put my microwave heat packs in there, so my microwave's always going, so I can warm those up. That's my main use for my microwave. Oh God, I hate microwaves. And you know, this segues quite well onto the next video, which uh, Voice in the Sky, please play for us the first one, and then Natalie can. <laughs> Oh my god. Welcome back everybody. And if you were wondering what New Zealand street food slash pub grub looks like, uh, you got it right here. Okay. So there's steak and a burger patty on this one. All right, Kilo Chris. So we are finally in Auckland. This time I am at Broadway Diner and uh I'm about to take on their amazing brand new Broadway Diner Challenge. This thing is insane. It's a full menu challenge here. I have one of their legendary Aucklander burgers. This has a big old scotch fillet in it. And then I also have one of their white lady burgers, which is covered in an egg, bacon goodness. And then I have one of their chicken peri peri mayo burgers. I do have three different American style hot dogs. And then I do have a hot dog on a stick, some Kumara chips, and then a whole smattering of fries. And then I do have a ham and cheese toasty. I'm going to have one hour to finish all of this if I am successful. I do get the 140 New Zealand dollar meal for free, a groovy beanie to add to my collection, and my name and photo up on the wall of fame. I'm obsessed with these videos. The rise and rise of the professional eaters, Ben. Can she do that challenge? Well, I, I, um, 
can I can tell I can I, I can I can tell you that if she does, it might shave some months off of her life. <laughs> I think we've lost Natalie. Follow. I follow them. I follow them. Can you hear me? I, yeah. I follow them on Facebook. She's called Karina Eats Kilos, I think. Uh, and this is that's this isn't a, well, this isn't a, like a one off. They do this regularly. So she's like a bodybuilder. That eat these professional eaters. I'm obsessed with it because I love eating and I can't eat at the moment. And I like it's like I'm living vicariously through these professional eaters who can like finish that plate off in an hour. You know what? It's, oh. Although I think they're going to have terrible problems as they get older with their uh, gastric, uh, like a whole system. I would imagine. I, I'm with Slim there. I probably couldn't finish one of those sandwiches either. But let's find out if she does it, shall we? Something to move somewhere because all of everything is still here. Ooh. Oh. Final bite of food, and then a very, very slow milkshake chug. Mm. I'm ready to retire. <laughs> she did it in 38 minutes. What the fuck? She did it 20 minutes to... <laughs> quicker than she needed to so she didn't have to pay for the meal i'm i'm like well impressed i love eating if i could eat that much i think i wish i wish i went into that business a lot when i was younger but now it's not gonna happen i can barely eat at all at the moment i mean i just barely eat anyway right as you know that's a I lot should... of food yeah but you spent you you spent time with me I, yeah like i I, 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 I barely eat food yet i'm a fat bastard it's really not fair because you're yeah. skinny as you like and, and you're yeah. like oh i like eating i'll eat whatever i want i tell you i have one french fry and my hip fucking doubles in size that's why just... i'm struggling because i love eating and I've, I've got a massively high metabolism and my body won't let me eat properly at the moment uh slim said she must do the world's biggest farts yeah i dread to think you wouldn't want to be sharing a bed with her would you you <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> should be putting, putting your head under the cover you wouldn't be able to escape <laughs> Oh. oh dear. Um now let's move on to a bit of stupidity. If the earth was a globe, then there wouldn't be any flat earthers. If the earth was actually a globe, then there wouldn't be anyone online trying to sit there and debate and say, hey, no, I don't think it's a globe. Do you see what I'm saying? The debate is there because the model is wrong. The debate about whether the earth is a globe or it's flat only exists because the globe model is wrong. So on that premise, if someone argues something is wrong, well, it has to be wrong because this man tells you it. What's your I mean, It's like the terrain theory, guys, right? Now, I, 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 I won't tell you whether or not I subscribe to germ theory or terrain theory. You can probably make your own conclusions based upon that. But these, I, I remember watching this one, um, terrain theory guy was just going look mate he's australian i'm telling you now right everything i say is absolutely correct because i'm really smart i'm really smart and i say it's correct and i'm like okay but why is it correct oh because i'm really smart oh yeah i think that's one of the worst arguments i've ever heard for flat earth though he basically said well it has to be flat because there wouldn't be people arguing about it otherwise. Um, I hate to tell this man, but people will argue about anything. I mean, just put anything on Twitter. People will argue with you. If oh, you yeah. say that orange is a colour orange, you'll have people arguing with you. Oh, yeah, so of course. On that basis, it's the most <laughs> ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And by the way, terrain theory, germ theory, I think it's a bit of both in my, um, in my uh, opinion. I think uh, that generally that you would pick up something if your terrain is struggling, but the germs are still there. So I think there's, that th th I do, things like chicken pox. Hold on a minute. So your son's comment is on screen, says, have you yeah. heard of grifters? And our John, our producer, yeah. has responded to him in the chat saying, you're ma. <laughs> I'm, I'm a grifter. John. <laughs> oh. He's pulling out the insults today. You're going to call me a shill as well. He really My is. shill. We do this shit for free. 
We can do this shit for free. We don't he get said, paid for this. He said it was a joke. No, I know. I had him in my head. Yeah, well, I know it was a joke. And me calling him out, that that was a joke also. It's me for set up, you know. He's just ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just. <sighs> it is what it is. It, it, it is it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, um, I, I agree with you, though. These people, so many of them, they just go, look, I'm right because... Yes. Because why? Yeah, I know. Because... Why? Because I'm right. Because I said so. Uh, and then, like I say, go back to the guy I saw arguing about. Tra- I- I'm just really, really smart, you know, and that's why I'm right. I don't have to tell you why. Just really fucking oh. smart. Well, that's the same thing that he was saying. He's not explaining why he thinks the world is flat. Just that it has to be true because people because are arguing. Wrong. Because the <laughs> globe's wrong. You know, he's not giving me any evidence or anything to actually... I actually have. I have a question for the Flat Earthers, right? Because if it really is flat and um, it's being kept from all of us, that must mean that tens, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people actually know that it is flat and are then therefore keeping it from the rest of us, including their own families. Because because if you to listen to what these people are saying, then there's a giant ice wall wrapped around the sun. That, yeah. That, that, that we're we're I guess defending or, or protecting. I, I, I think I've I heard it's something about an Antarctica agreement and it's the only one that everyone still keeps to and nobody is allowed to to um go and explore there and that's what they're trying to hide. I think that's why I heard a flat why? say. But why? But why again? This is the thing that I always come back to who with benefits? any conspiracy theory. Yeah, who's benefiting from it? And does it affect our everyday life? So even, let's say they were true, Ben, and and, mm-hmm. the, and it's flat, how does that affect mine and yours day-to-day life? Does it really make any difference? No, it doesn't. That's, that, that's why I never no. get the, why so people are so, so upset about it. All believe want, what you like. Yeah, believe what you like. But if you want me to believe it, then you're going to have to come at me with some compelling evidence. Yes, absolutely. And by compelling evidence, I mean not uh, the, the globe's wrong, so it must be. I mean, that's yeah. not really compelling evidence. However, no. we're going to see a comparison now between our generation and Generation Z. So <laughs> let's, let's take a look. answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Now hang up the call. <laughs> How do you make a heart symbol with your hands? <laughs> that, is not that is the wrong way. That's stupid. That was so block <laughs> around <Rogers. laughs> <laughs> you take a pretend photo? Like that or like with like my phone? Well, like, if you're ready to take a picture of someone. Here. <laughs> How do you roll down a car window? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you push the button. How would you pose for a group photo? <laughs> Two, three. Oh, my gosh. Hand on hip. Oh, lay yes. out. Or for the front row. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, what are you like? I don't know, like it. I hate them. They're a bit too cheery, aren't they? Uh, uh, far too cheery, even for this show. Far yeah. too cheery. But you know what? I, I am technically a millennial. Technically. I, it did make me feel old, though, by watching it, because I did everything that the millennial did. I did do yeah, the heart. Too. I did roll down the window. I did um, uh, I did do the phone. Yep. So it's showing yep. my age. It's, it's just... Yeah, but... We're, we're you, getting old, be- Ben. If you think about it, we we have children, right? Your children are in their teens. One of my yeah. children is fast approaching his teens. Um, it's yeah, man, we we are getting old. We are we are aging. And if you agree that we're aging, don't forget to hit that like button yeah. and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because we're here every Monday. Actually, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, next Monday. And the Monday after, the shows will be pre-recorded, but they will feature both myself and Natalie. They'll be filmed, I think, next Sunday. Next Monday, we're filming on Sunday. And then the following Mondays, we're filming on the Saturday. 
Um, but it will look exactly the same. It will run exactly the same. We just won't be speaking physically to the chat. I think Natalie and John will probably be in the premiere of it and yes. uh, we'll talk in the uh, tippy tappies. Yes, yes, yeah. But that's, uh, it away. that's just because if you're not subscribed to the other channel, The Real Review UK, you probably should be. Natalie has been out and about making some uh -huh. content for that, uh, uh, which I, I am yet to review and approve, but I imagine it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ben's the boss. You damn right. It goes. Yeah, absolutely. You damn right. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the eye candy too, and the boss. So I can't compete. Well, you, you know. Oh, there we go. You, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, just ask Emma Watts. She knows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's move on then. Uh, and this is one I don't know why you've given us, but you have. <laughs> it made me laugh. <sighs> oh, Terry, you farted. I took you to Is it Terry okay picking that up? Yeah. Seriously? You know, Bro, you know, you know. Trevor. You knew, you knew. You did. You did it. You're an animal. That's really mature. Oh. That's all. Awesome. Why, Natalie? Why? Because well, I just thought, just thought, it made me laugh. I like, always like a bit of toilet humour. But imagine, you know, like silent but violent. If we always have thermal cameras, right? And yeah. uh, everyone knew when you farted, the world would be a very different place. I'm sure. People, want, people don't want people seeing if they farted like that, do they? Yeah, but then there would be a bit more spontaneous combustion in the world. <laughs> You know, so that's true. You'd end up. Have you well, seen, have you seen the South Park movie? Right, Kenny's yeah. death is quite, you know, horrific in that film. <laughs> Imagine that Karina eats kilos. Imagine what her fart would look like on that thermal machine. See, you can have I, competitions. <laughs> I imagine that woman has to use a lot of laxative products. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean. If I could survive the rest of my life without eating any food, I would. I'm I'm not a fan of food. I really I'm really not. But I I, I know you love it, right? But oh, I just love drinks, and that's it's, it's my bane of my existence. But I'm on the sugar free stuff now. I'm on the sugar free stuff so that I try not to get as fat. Yeah, um, I I've got like a bit of weak squash. It's really not very exciting. I'd much rather be drinking fizzy drinks. But well, I tell I tell you what. Next week, if you're still feeling shitty, just pour a load of Pepto Bismol in your weak squash, and we'll see yeah. what happens. We'll see what yeah. happens. Get some Pepto Bismol, pour yeah. it in. Right, can't be any worse. Right, Slim has berry tea. Oh, very nice, Slim. Very yeah, maybe nice I indeed. should be. Yeah, maybe I'll have tea next time, like a nice herbal tea. Get proper uh, wash. And Slim also suggests that that Karina eats kilos must be thermonuclear. <laughs> must, must, uh, and Slim, I'm with you, my friend. Yep. Must be absolutely thermonuclear. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Brit Mate says he's never cut loose on his missus. Really? But then, but then again, how long have you been with your missus? Okay. Because that's, yeah, that's the question. Yeah, you can't. If you've been with someone long term, you are going to accidentally slip out of fire at some point. You can't be together for 20 years and not fight in front of your partner. <sighs> she's right. Because... You know, she's absolutely <laughs> right. I, yeah. I mean, I've been with my wife. We've, we've been married over 11 years. Okay. Uh, we uh, we just don't care anymore. We just don't care anymore. Yep. Um, the idea, and plus, you know, may, maybe from my point of view, being a disabled man who's had to have some questionable procedures in his lifetime, shall we say, um, the idea of shame is something I don't feel. I, I'm I sure. feel no shame. I'm sure Vaughn's <laughs> going to be happy about that. Shalini says Vaughn's always farting, so she's outing him. I actually, no, but I can actually confirm. I've seen that happen in real life. <laughs> I can confirm that. Um, <laughs> we need to get a thermal thermal picture of him, Shalini, so he knows for the future of his farting problems. <laughs> right, we're talking teeth now, which is a personally, you know, horrific subject to me, but you can talk and I will give you some anecdotes. Go for it. Yeah, so I thought I'd bring up the turkey teeth. I think we've got a couple of pictures of the turkey teeth. Uh, mm. It's uh, It's become quite famous 
now. Uh, it's a look that uh, normally comes along with the kind of uh, Botox lips, I think it is, it? or a filler in the lips. And uh, that's what they have to do in order for you to get these turkey teeth. They actually have to ruin your natural teeth, as you can see, and make them into that kind of awful little pointy thing. Personally, I can't think of anything worse. And this man is very disappointed because he went to get turkey teeth and it all went wrong. And now he's been left with these absolutely awful set of teeth, as you can see. I mean, we like to say we've got another example. Show us the next example here. Uh, this, this is <laughs> she looks a beauty, beauty, isn't she? Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I understand why people are doing it because um, I, I can't get a dentist. I haven't been able to get a dentist for over two years. I, I'm an NHS dental patient. Nobody will take on an NHS dental patient in my local area. I've been filling my teeth myself, wow. and. And uh, I've had to rely on people's kindness and donations when I've had to go to a private dentist to have a tooth ripped out. It's yeah. as simple as that. And that, that ends up costing a lot of money. And, you know, some people watching now have, have helped towards that in the past. Um, so I understand why people are doing it. It's not that expensive. Um, I love that. I mean, it, it, it's definitely something I would consider down the line. Maybe um, just simply out of desperation, because, like I say, I can't get myself a dentist here in this country. So I'm understanding why people are doing this. And, you know, Did for you some people, it's going right. And for many, it's going wrong. Did you see the picture of William Shakespeare with the turkey teeth I, I, I and the hair transplant? It's like they all look the same now. Uh, it's not a look that I like, but as we said, if it's your freedom of choice, if you like bright white fake teeth and filler and a fake tan and a and a and a hairline, you go for it. Uh, but it's agree. not a look that it's not a look that uh, that is attractive to me. But well, yeah, uh, if that's well, what you want, you know, we're all different, Ben. Well, like I say, you know, my teeth are screwed, but my teeth are screwed because of the years of abuse from fizzy drinks. I know what I've done to them, but that, that's because I'm teetotal. I'm sober for proper reasons. And I had to replace them with something. I'm autistic. I've got an addictive personality, as you well know, Natalie. Um, so you have to replace it with something. And, and the the consequence has I, been I've fucked my teeth. I've been, so. I've been very lucky seeing as that I've had an addiction to fizzy drinks for, for most of my life. And look, I know actually pretty good. But I'm I not showing you mine. I'm, I'm just not getting mine out. It's just, oh. I mean, the one on my true front one, that's fake. Oh, well, you've can always got the choice of turkey teeth. You never know. Maybe, well, maybe, maybe that's a decision that you can, that you can think about. Do you want well, the this, fake turkey teeth? Well, this fake one is actually because of the ineptitude of the NHS. Uh, this is an implant. This isn't a denture. Um, it's because when I had an accident when I was a small child, I had some surgery done uh, to reconstruct my jaw. And um, they left the piece of surgical instrument in the root of my tooth, which over the years calcified and killed the root and then finally killed the front tooth. And they acknowledged their mistake and gave me a free implant. So win. <laughs> oh, that's terrible but um i was gonna say um that those turkey teeth they're so bad that people have been putting fake teeth on live mm -hmm. and people can't tell the difference that they've put like a fake pair in or if they're turkey teeth it's, yeah. it's definitely a look it's definitely a a, a, a acquired taste yeah I, 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 I agree teeth. with you i agree with you you know um but I understand why people are doing it, especially right now when, you know, as, yeah. as a British citizen, yeah. so many people are not able to get a, a dentist here in Britain. And then, you know, people like, I don't mean to knock these people because it's not their fault, but like people on the Bibby Stockholm, for example, have access to a private dentist 24 bloody seven. And then you've got people like myself and other people all over this country who can't get a single I'm... piece of dental work done. And you can understand why they're doing it. You can understand their resentment and you can understand understand what they're thinking well this is gonna solve my issues yeah i'm very lucky i've actually got an nhs dentist so i do make sure i go for my six monthly checkups so i keep on their books because uh well like you said once you come off them you're not going to find another one exactly exactly indeed uh so let's move on to the next video oh 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 we're waiting in suspense I don't think he knows that we're still on stage. I can see it on my picture, though. 
Oh, there it is. I like this little video. I, it just shows you there was no way I thought that was real, and they've just changed the settings. It, like it, it looks like little kids' toys, doesn't it? It play? does. It does. Um, but no, that that is real. That is real. Just making it look like stop motion. And I know you like that little video. And I tell you what else is real. And this only got released a few hours ago, boys and girls. <laughs> Next picture, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not AI generated. And I say that because John actually contacted me and said, what the hell is that AI generated Superman? But no, this is an officially released image by director James Gunn of the new Superman, David Sweat, in his new Superman suit. What do you think of that, Natalie? Well, like you said, when I first saw it, it did look very AI generated. So is this, has he done it before? I don't know much about these adventure movies. No, this is the, this is is the this first is... time he's played Superman. And I, I said to you when you sent it to me, it's like a poor man's uh, Henry Cavill. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah. I, I still don't get why Gum fired Cavill, because Cavill is Superman for, the, for this yeah. new generation. And... I don't know if you guys have seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but this Superman suit, same director, James Gunn, this Superman suit looks exactly like those Guardians of the Galaxy jumpsuits, but just sort of, I don't like the way it's not skin tight, and I, I don't know. But I think the problem with the last two things we've watched, though, it's so hard to tell anymore what's real mm. and what's not. Like... You know, you anything now they can change to AI. He might not have even actually done that photo shoot. They mm. might have just added him to it, and they don't. That's what they're saying. Like, is Hollywood going to go kind of out of business essentially? Because oh, they don't fine. actually, they don't actually need actors anymore. They just let need me, a picture, and then AI can act for them. Let me let me tell you, Hollywood is screwed, and the reason Hollywood is screwed, especially these large studios, is because they have. Increase the budgets of these movies completely out of control. I'll give you an example. Um, they're doing reshoots right now for a whole month on Deadpool and Wolverine, which comes out on July 16th. Now, they'll say to you, oh, this is totally normal. But A, a whole month's worth of reshoots less than two months before the release of a bloody movie is not normal. But that film already had a budget of a quarter of a billion fucking dollars. And now they've dropped these reshoots on top of it. And then you've got the marketing cost, which is going to be over a hundred million dollars. This is why Hollywood is screwed because I, they need to make a billion dollars at the box office just to make their money back. I might try and put this on next week's show. I sent it to my son because we, we like South Park and there was an AI generated. I don't know if you've seen it, real version of uh, South Park that mm -hmm. AI had done with real people to make mm -hmm. it look like Kenny and Stan. And, and it was pretty amazing like the people in the comments were saying hold on a minute they don't need hollywood if you can create something that good with the uh, with not even real people surely yeah then why would you pay for these big actors in the future I, they'll I just do a movie what, on a ai i tell you what brit mate is a man after my own heart i am also waiting for alien romulus uh, that looks really good looks really good i i, I also think if you're into films furiosa might be pretty good as well. Um, uh, so, um, Simon Gold says, Evening all, his UNN show went on late tonight. Is Nat happy yet? Yes, it's cheering me up. I still have a, I still have a cold, let. I'm just feeling a bit disgusting, and you might hear my, that uh, my voice isn't great, but I'm here and I'm smiling. So thank you, Simon. Right, uh, just a few things left for tonight then. So let's move on to our luggage.
from London Heathrow Airport and here's what rocked up at my door. It cost me a grand total of £80 so I thought I'd open it on camera and we can decide if it's worth it. Okay so I started off by taking off this black wrapping to reveal this blue Dolce suitcase. These go for about £200 brand new so that's a pretty good start. Now it's time to whack it open. I was actually super nervous. I had to cut off this tag to get inside and here's what the suitcase looked like when I opened it. It's definitely a woman's suitcase. First items on top was anti-itch cream and some brand new underwear which isn't a good start then underneath that was a bunch of traditional dresses and outfits which are actually so stunning it was definitely a woman's suitcase there was a couple of cute tops like this pink one and this white one i also pulled out three pairs of pajama bottoms and this black bag was from primark it's actually quite cute then have we crashed we may have i think that was the end of it no uh okay um uh but I uh, wanted to, uh, or saw this and I just thought, is this ethical? You know, should these uh, companies be selling people suitcases rather than actually trying to get back to their owners? And it's a bit like when people go into somebody's house and do a robbery or something. I'm like, yeah, but I'm sure so. I'm very comfortable with people going through other people's suitcases. I was like, oh, God, it's wrong. Even so, you know, you could be the owner of that suitcase and the airline may well have lost it because that's probably what happened here, yes, first yeah. and foremost. And you're sitting there going, watching this video, going, she's going through my underwear. I, I mean, why are they putting it on video? It is a bit weird, isn't it? It's a bit strange. I didn't even know that. I, I thought we'd, I'd put it on there because I didn't even know that you, you could do that. Like, you could buy something for 80 quid. And it just feels a bit personal going through somebody else's lost I mean, belongings. I don't know. There, there are whole TV shows based upon people buying abandoned storage lockers, right? And oh, they do, yeah. And, and they just go through other people's stuff and they, they look at all this storage. And there are YouTube channels as well devoted solely to this, where they buy these abandoned storage lockers and they bid on them and they outbid one another and they go for each other's stuff. And like you said, I'm just not quite sure how ethical it all really is. It's, I'm really... Can you imagine, right? I mean, I don't really fly very often, but I've gone and got lost my suitcase. And then I see on YouTube somebody's opened it up and um they're like on oh, literally, oh look, they're going right. through all my personal belongings. I'd be absolutely distraught. And it's all filmed live. No, I'm not happy with it. I don't know. Nah, that's fair enough. And you know, I think people in the uh chat are agreeing here. I mean, Brett Mate says she bought luggage for 80 quid. She bought luggage for 80 quid. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, no, people in the chat completely agreeing here, like no personal privacy. And if you agree with us, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already told you you would hate me by the end of this. Now, we have, uh, like I say, we have about two more items here. Uh, one of them is actually from Simon Gold, but we'll get to that at the end. Don't worry. Um, but this here is a tweet from somebody that calls themselves propaganda 17 and says last night a mate offered to buy a girl a drink for her birthday while out socially she came over and asked for one and he kindly handed over his card she then returned with a 35 pound bottle of prosecco but big smirk on her face is this acceptable well, I, I, my answer, um, I, I well, it didn't go down very well, but uh, this person was very upset about this and apparently he thought the woman was really cheeky. I said, well, the person who's at fault here is somebody giving you, any a drunk person, a card. Mm. If you give a drunk person a credit card, you get whatever uh, is coming to you. I mean, that could have been worse. £35, she could have put a round of drinks on for hundreds of pounds and it would have been exactly. your fault. Don't give anybody your card is, is the answer to that one. I'm afraid. I'm not going to say that. I mean, okay, was she a bit cheeky? Maybe. But if, you know, it could have been a lot worse. Don't, you know, be more be more sensible. I mean, your son, your son is, is pointing it out, saying seven bottles. And yeah. uh, Brit Mate says he's lucky it wasn't Cristal Champers. I, I completely agree with you. And I completely agree with what Natalie just said here. If somebody came up to me and went, could you buy me a drink? Uh, and I didn't know them. And I was single. Right. Let's put all of these circumstances into. I'd say um, either no or, <laughs> or OK, what would you like? And then go and purchase that single drink. Single drink. 
not bottle of drink. Yeah. I would go, I, I, you, like you said, Natalie, you hand over your card to a drunk to person. To anyone. To anyone, even. She might when not you're have taking... even bloody returned the card. Yeah, you don't exactly. know the person. You know, if you want to buy someone a drink, part of it should be the act of going to buy them the drink and going to the bar for them. If you can't even be asked and you hand someone a card, I got no sympathy. I think she could have spent a lot more. If it was me, I'm being honest here. Okay, maybe this is my bad side. Um, I would have spent more. If someone gave me a card and was stupid enough, I'd have probably gone and got a massive round. So there you and, go. Uh, Don't give me is, a card. The, the thing is, I, 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 from the male side of this, I just wouldn't hand over the card. I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just uh would you could like i said could you get me a drink there's two answers sorry i have no idea who you are if i'm or... down my local ben and i give my card to anybody in that pub they're going to put a massive round of drinks on it and find it absolutely hilarious so yeah, yeah. i think there's a bit of uh naivety on this person and i don't think he was getting the answers that he wanted i think he wanted the to slate the woman and how rude she was i'm and like I... no take some accountability for your actions <laughs> And I think the term play stupid games, win stupid prizes yeah. applies yeah. to this one. Now, before we leave you all tonight, right, we're going to talk about what's real and what's not. Natalie, explain yourself. <laughs> so Simon Gold, who's in the chat, put this oh, no. up. I had to take a tw like look twice. I'm thinking, is that an old picture of me? But then I remembered that my boobs aren't that nice. So even when I was younger, um, that's not a picture of me. It says Natalie Chill in Reading Town Centre 2012. I've never had a fringe either. So I believe Simon Gold put a picture of me on, on somebody else's body. Exactly. Right. <laughs> this is the point we've been making at different yep. points throughout this evening. Yeah. Uh, so John wants to see your right wrist. My right wrist. He says he wants to I... look for the tattoo on your right wrist. That's yeah. It's this. That's see. That's not that. It, that it's definitely not me. It's definitely not me. There we I, go then. But so, but yeah. but I mean, I could say it's me because she does look rather good. <laughs> <laughs> I could pretend. I mean, she does look like you. She really yeah. does. But we we discussed this. Simon, can you can you confirm this? Did you did you uh, put me on a picture of somebody else, or just find something that looks like me? Because, well, how on earth are you just going to find somebody? You know, pick somebody <laughs> out of the blue that looks like you. He's done a very good job here. Whatever. But yeah, he's done. well done, Simon. Yeah, you just showed us you can't believe anything. Exactly. Believe what's nothing. Real, what's you, not real? Nothing yeah. you hear and half of what you see. Question That's... everything. Trust no one. Particularly uh, me and Ben. Someone said it was Anne Huff Hathaway face swap nap. There you uh, go. There we are. There you go. You cannot believe most of what you see these days because it's so easy to manipulate and it's so easy to create deep fakes and the like. And, you know, that 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 is a message we would like you all to take away from this evening. Uh, and, and I would like you to take away... Maybe a smile upon your face. Maybe you've enjoyed this. I know I've enjoyed this. Uh, it's good to laugh. It's good to mock. And it's good to do it at the start of the week when everybody is feeling somewhat at their lowest. So, with that, Brit Mate asks, are we live on Friday night? I was about to get there. Uh, yes, me and John will be live with you Friday night for Chasing Descent all in we were gonna i was just too unwell this week it's as simple as that um i was not well um so we will be back friday night for all in john and ed will be live on the outer place channel on thursday night to talk some conspiracy or cryptid or some shenanigan like that and yeah i just hope everybody's had a wonderful time if you haven't subscribed to the channel already then please don't forget to do so. If you haven't left the like, then uh, you've insulted us, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> and if you have enjoyed it, we say thank you very much. Natalie, over to you. Yeah, I've had a good laugh. I think in this crazy world of social media and the internet, uh, we need to learn to laugh 
uh, otherwise we cry. And that's the hopefully the point of today's show. We hope we put a smile on your face and uh, it's a good way to start the week. Absolutely. And don't forget, guys, next week's will be here at the same time, but it will be pre-recorded. So if we're not responding to you in the chat, that is why. So uh, it's been great.